Previously on the Saddle Club. You have to come up with the overdue loan payments by the end of the day tomorrow. Look, Drew, what's important is that Pine Hollow Stables continues to operate as a riding school. So we have to take whatever steps necessary to ensure that that happens. I know what you're trying to do. Convince me to get my father to put money into Pine Hollow. Nice try, but I wasn't born yesterday. Red, please don't do this. I'll be returning Storm first thing in the morning. Until then, for your own safety, you are not to go near that horse. Is that understood? I have to go tell Drew. <laughs> you last night, Storm. We escaped from all this. A road where, where we could be free. I'm scared that if you go back to the shelter, they'll put you down. And that would be so... so unfair. You're a good horse with a good heart. I know that. It's obvious to me. How can they destroy such a good horse? It's because of what those cruel people have done to you. You go a little wild now and then, but with enough love, all those bad memories will fade away. <laughs> Because we trust each other, don't we, Storm? What in the world do you think you're doing? But Red, he's so calm and gentle. I thought I told you to stay away from him. But Red... I want you out of there, now. Any idea what could have just happened? But it didn't! Lisa! Red, you're the one who told me that some horses need more time than others. And for some horses, it doesn't matter how much time you give them. You can't undo the damage that's been done. I worked at a property when I was 14. There was this one gelding that my boss picked up from an auction. He was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. He was also the meanest. I offered a summer's pay in exchange for that horse, convinced I could win him over. My boss thought I was crazy, but he agreed. What happened? I worked with that gelding all summer. I figured sooner or later he'd realise I wasn't going to hurt him. Every time I thought I was getting somewhere, he'd prove me wrong. Until finally, he put me in the hospital. I just don't want that to happen to you. But Storm isn't that horse. Lisa, sometimes when a horse's trust of humans has been broken, it can't ever be repaired. When that happens, the horse is a danger to himself and to everyone around him. But, Red, it isn't Storm's fault. We can't just let him be destroyed. I've made my decision and it's final. I'll be taking him back to the shelter as soon as I've done with the morning feed. Hello. 
Hello, girls. What do we have here? Hamsters? No, Ashley. Guinea pigs. Black hamsters, only cuter. Can I have a look? Yeah. Oh. That's quite a responsibility you've taken on. Huh? They can be quite a handful. Well, they're really small. How much work can they be? So, we'll have to have at least one rehearsal. And we're gonna have to change at your house, Lisa, because my dad will send us off in granny clothes. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong, Lisa? It's what we wanted. We thought you'd be happy about this. <laughs> I know, I know. And I really want to. But I keep thinking about Storm. We do too. But the singing is the three of us together, a saddle club thing. Storm is a saddle club thing too, isn't he? Hey, the money will help save Pine Hollow. And that's got to be a saddle club thing. <laughs> <laughs> There must be another way besides selling the land. Why didn't Drew tell me sooner? I could have helped. Look, I appreciate the thought, but it wouldn't change anything. Isn't there anything I can do? <laughs> Not unless you've won the lottery lately. That was last month. <sighs> Lisa came to see me in a real state. Storm's a hopeless case, is he? I mean, over my head. I thought I could do this, but I can't. Poor Lisa. She believes in him. She also believes in you. Look, Red, you might be right about Storm. Some situations are just out of our hands, but if there's even the slightest chance to change that, don't you owe it to Storm and to yourself to try? heard him did a good job of it. My guess is he has every reason to fear us. He's worse with men. The only way to truly conquer that fear would be to prove to him once and for all that we're not gonna harm him, even when he's vulnerable. Does that mean you'll try? That means we'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Sure you want to go through with this? It won't hurt him, right? There's no physical danger, but once we start, there's no turning back. If we do, it'll be worse than if we hadn't done anything at all. Lisa, you have to understand that if this doesn't work, we'll have destroyed any chance of gaining Storm's trust. We have to try. <laughs> Get up! Here we go. Come on, boy. I promise you, I'm not hurting him. He's afraid of what we might do, not of what we're doing. Now I need you to grab that other lariat and bring it over here. We need to teach Storm 
But it wasn't the rope or the whip that hurt him. It was the person using it. But he's afraid of me. You need to believe in this too, Lisa. We can't do it without you. Good. Now very gently, brush the lariat along his side. Easy, Storm. I won't hurt you. Maybe there's hope for this horse yet. What? I thought you said there was two daddy guinea pigs. Well, that's what I was told. Well, that daddy is really a mummy. He'll make a fortune. Hey, hey. What are you doing? Hey. <laughs> Put it in here. Scooter. Do they agree to the advance? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Way to drive a bargain scooter. You're a top manager. So, when do we get it? When do you want it? Now. Okay. <laughs> Something wrong, Scooter? Well, uh, being a manager, it's not a day at the beach, you know. The truck's not going to unload itself, Scooter. So, where's our money? You do have the advance. You said you had it. No, I haven't got it as such. So who has got it? I have. You have. Why has Red got it? It's complicated. Actually, it's quite simple. You see, an advance means we get our money up front. So where's our money? You haven't told them, Scooter. Haven't told us what? What's going on? Scooter? Oh, okay now. You know how I told you the event in Sweetwater Mall was to launch a new line of dog food? Yes. Go on. Oh, no. We're getting paid in dog food? It's not just any dog food. It's got nine essential vitamins and minerals in it. So, should I go and unload the other 200 boxes then? Yeah, why not? <sighs> I knew it was
was just a matter of time and patience. You're yourself now, aren't you? You weren't yourself before. I knew we could do it. Wait. It was red, really, wasn't it? It was red and me together. Ah, red let you think that. You could never handle that horse by yourself, Lisa. Face it. I'm sure I could now. Oh, I'd like to see you try. Where are they? They're gone. I can say that. Ruined. Storm. Let's get some fresh air and sunshine. I'll show Veronica. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, boy? As most of you may be aware, Pine Hollow has recently encountered some financial difficulties. As a last resort, we've decided to go ahead with the sale of the land surrounding the stables. Unfortunately, we won't be able to use any more of the riding trails. I'm sorry. Hopefully, we'll find other places to ride, huh? Such a shock. I could see it coming a mile off. How? Well, the Regnaries are nice people, but business people, <laughs> I don't think so. I'd hate to see Pine Hollow close down. Well, that's what happens when a place is badly run. Well, somebody like you would be good at running Pine Hollow. Well, I don't think I'd be a very popular choice. Well, that's just because people are jealous of you. Well, why do you say that? Well, people are jealous because they want to be like you. Even I wouldn't mind. You're a strange one, Scooter. Would you like to be me? Oh, I don't like it much, but what can you do? There's no return or exchange on yourself once you're born. So, you think I could run the stables? Consider the advantages, all the things, all the people you don't like. Just change them. You're as quiet as a lamb when you're happy, aren't you, Storm? There we are. That should keep the bank off your back for a while. I don't know what to say. Well, you could start by assuring me what a good investment I've made. That it is. Daddy. Ah, yes, well, as your new partner, I have just one small request to make. And that would be? I should like my daughter to take an active role in the day-to-day -day running of the riding school. As a way to further her business skills. Shall we say executive, student, president? <gasps> Must be the excitement.
Lisa, Lisa, are you all right? What did he do? Did Storm turn on you? Uh, I don't know who read. I just went for a gentle walk and I tripped and fell. Storm reared up at me. He was protecting you. It's all right, Storm. You're a good horse. Say hello to Red. <laughs> He's turned over a new leaf, Red. <laughs> Can I have everyone's attention, please? There's been a change of plans. Pine Hollow's trails are back in business. Oh. I have one other announcement. I'd like to introduce to you Pine Hollow's new executive student president, Veronica D'Angelo. Oh, woohoo! Thank you, everyone. As your new executive student president, I will be making a few changes to Pine Hollow for the better. The first thing I would like to attack is the big rat problem. I'm sure you've all noticed the nasty little creatures running around the There's place. There's only and one big rat around here. Unacceptable. I'm sure we all agree. Drew, I am really glad that everything worked out for you. Sometimes we find what we need when we least expect it. What a beautiful creature. Hey, Red, Lisa, I believe you know Mr. Roth from the bank? Hi there. He's a magnificent animal. Do you mind if I... Uh... Just be careful. A storm isn't used to strangers. You are a beautiful boy, eh? Hey? Hey? Come here. A... What a lovely animal, hmm? He's up for adoption from the shelter. Is he now? You know, I've got a farm not ten minutes from here and it's been vacant for far too long. It needs a fair bit of work and I could do with a good horse to give me a hand. Do you think that Storm would like that? I think he would love it. <laughs> good fella. You got a new home, Storm. <laughs> So here he is, yeah. Windsong. Windsong the hero. He's beautiful. Beautiful. He's fantastic. Oh, he's great. Do you know who that is? No, but he's beautiful. Not the horse, the guy. That's Ethan Lowell Jr. Who? His father was only the most famous racehorse trainer ever. What's he doing here? Training my new horse. He's yours? Daddy bought him. His name's Winsong. Winsong? But he's racing in the Bridgemont Cup on Saturday. A horse like that doesn't race. He wins. Maybe you'll see it on TV. We'll be in the winner's circle. If he's racing in the Bridgemont Cup, what's he doing here? Shouldn't he be at a racing stable? Daddy doesn't trust just anyone to look after him. And now that he's the owner around here... Part. Oh, no. Pine Hollow still belongs to the Regnery. Daddy appointed me executive student president. From now on, things are going to be different around here. No more tired old flea bags and cut rate ponies. From now on, Pine Hollow only accepts the best. I hear you're going to be more active around here, Veronica. It's always good to have an extra pair of hands. You can wash these. Windsong will need them for Saturday. <laughs>
that's Veronica's horse? I don't get it. It's like the meaner she gets, the more good stuff happens to her. And don't forget the executive student president thing. Come on, what does that even mean? It's not like she has any real power. Maybe we should bring it up with Mrs. Rigg. No, we'll fight our own battles. Four down, four to go. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm putting one of these in every stall. No more yelling from one end of the barn to the other. Need a stable hand? Just push the button. Did you ask Drobel or Mrs. Rigg? Why? It's Daddy's money. He said I could put whatever I want on his account. So you're in charge of your dad's part of the stables? Exactly. I'm managing his investment. He doesn't have time to worry about running this place. Does that mean you can change the horse assignments? I can do whatever I want. Why? I'm tired of riding Bark. I want Prancer. <sighs> Consider it done. Cool. That. It was nowhere near his record time. It was still a very good gallop. We're not doing time trials, Mr. D'Angelo. He's just stretching his legs, getting used to his new surroundings. We haven't got time to coddle him. You promised me a winning horse. Then let me do my job. I wish you would. If I race him flat out every session, he'll have nothing left for Bridgemont. I'm not interested in excuses. I need results. I can see where Veronica gets it from. Oh, owners are the same the world over. Just make my prize position go faster. And the more money they've paid, <laughs> the less patient they are. That's what I admire most about your dad, Ethan. He was a patient man. Mm, that's true. Though, he didn't start out a great trainer. It took him years to develop his talent. Even longer to train a winning horse. Did you know Ethan's dad, Mrs. Rigg? We shared a common interest in horses. And barn dancers, I heard. Tell us more. No, that's quite enough, I think. We know nothing about you when you were young. Well, that's the way it shall remain. No. <laughs> you can't do that. I just did. Max assigned Prancer to me. Don't worry, you can ride far. <gasps> Veronica! Lisa, don't take it personally. I've given everyone a change. Put me on Jasper. I can't ride Comanche. They're advanced horses. And I think you're both ready for a challenge. You'll thank me for this. You can't do this. Hey. What's the problem? <sighs> Nothing to worry about. Drew assigns the school horses, not Veronica. You are so wrong. I am the executive student president, and that means when it comes to students, I'm in charge. Why don't you go muck out a stall or something and leave this to me? She's out of control. I'll talk to Drew. Mr. Lowell? Yeah. I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan. All those horses your dad trained, Eclipse, Sundancer, Moonlight's Desire. I watched all the races and good luck with Windsong. You're a racing fan. More like a horse fan. Yeah, me too. Can't believe Windsong's at Pine Hollow. Neither can I. Sorry, it's not what I meant. Pine Hollow is a great facility. It's just a bad idea to move a horse into a new stable days before a big race. Why did you? Now you have to ask Mr. D'Angelo that one. His horse. He probably misses his stable mates. <laughs> Hard enough for any horse to be stuck in a new environment, especially for a horse like Winsel. <laughs> See, he's already high strung. <laughs> like any good race horse, right? He's the best. If you need any help, I... You spend any time around racehorses? Yeah, I used to exercise them for David McLeod. Well, I could use some help. Really? Us horse fans have to stick together in this business. <laughs> She's 
totally out of control. It's like Veronica times ten. And I know why she did it. Because Christy wants to ride Prancer. He's more stressed out than we thought. He hasn't even touched his food. Putting Christy on Prancer is bad enough. What about Melanie on Comanche? Ashley on Jasper? Mm -hmm. Who's Danny going to ride? You know what Drew should do? He should put Veronica on Bark or Dime. Poor Ethan. Everyone expects him to train winners like his dad. Now he's finally got the chance with Winsong and the D'Angelo's ruin it. The D'Angelo's? Exactly. That's what I've been saying. Winsong could be the next Secretariat or Sundancer or Farlap. Why am I talking to you? You've got resources on the brain. Oh, Mr. D'Angelo. I was looking for Drew. Yeah, he's in town. How can I help you? Oh, thanks. It's a Drew thing. I'll catch him later. Yeah, but wait, 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 wait. While you're here, what's, uh, what's this about? New tech for the school horses. Three new bridles and a saddle? Yeah. For school horses? Yeah. We don't buy tack for school horses. But the old tack was worn out. Well, you let the students buy their own. We're running a business here, Red, not a charity. I understand that, Mr. D'Angelo, but the school horses belong to Pine Hollow. And half of Pine Hollow belongs to me. From now on, you don't sign for a single carrot without my approval. Got it? Are you sure you want to be bothered with all that small stuff? All that small stuff can add up to big stuff if you're not careful. OK. But you're right. I, I can't deal with everything. So when it comes to the students, you talk to my daughter, Veronica. Bit of licorice and ginseng to give you some energy. It's not a pet, Ethan. I realise that. I train racehorses for a living, remember? Yes, of course. I just want to see the animal live up to our great expectations of him. I haven't seen a good performance out of him since he got here. You will, on Saturday. Yeah. He's got a lot of money on this horse, you know? He's worth it. Yeah. And if he wins the Bridgemont Cup, then his price goes up. I'm doing everything I can to get him ready. I'm so tired. Where's the fire, the energy? I was just about to try another herbal remedy and give him a leg massage. Use your flaky New Age concoctions. Just do what it takes to make him win, OK? I better get back to my chores. I wanted to talk to you, Stevie. What? Pine Hollow can no longer offer you free tuition in exchange for your chores. Well, duh, the tuition is not free. I do work in exchange. Well, we can't afford that arrangement any longer. I have a deal with the Regnaries. Nothing to do with you. Oh, really? If it weren't for my family, they would have lost everything. Stevie has to work here to pay for Belle's board. It's nothing personal, Stevie. It's business. You can't do that, Veronica. Stevie needs this job. The budget is very tight. We need more paying students. How can you afford to install intercoms if the money is so tight? We're going to tell Drew about this. I'll be informing Drew of my decision. Who let this bucket be? Oh, that's Starlight's. I was just going to put it in. Do you have any idea how important Winsong's diet is? He can't eat that. I'm sorry. Winsong is hypersensitive. You may have just cost him the race. She didn't mean to. This is a valuable racehorse, not one of your school ponies. You stay away from him. But you said I could help. Carol, this isn't a game. No one comes near this horse except for me and Mr. D'Angelo. Did that just happen? Because it felt like a bad dream. It wasn't your fault. He totally overreacted. Did he? But what if Winsong actually does get sick from Starlight's food? It was an accident, Carol. You didn't feed it to him on purpose. Ethan's just under a lot of pressure. A few mouthfuls of Starlet's food are not going to make a huge difference. You don't get it. His diet is so important. One change could throw him off. Wait a minute. What? He wasn't eating anything before. Maybe Starlet's food tastes better. Or maybe he's feeling better. See? And I just wrecked it. I have to go check on him. He can't. She's right. You should chill for a while. But I have to go see if he's okay. 
What if they catch you? I'll go. What? Nobody told me to stay away from Winsong. <sighs> wow, you were one thirsty horse. Keep your hair on, I'll get you some more. What are you doing? <sighs> Don't do that, you scared me. Now Stevie, Mr. D'Angelo and Ethan are on the warpath. No one is supposed to go near Windsong except them. Now, yeah, okay, I know. But I was just walking past and noticed that his water bucket was empty. <laughs> I just filled it. Well, he drank it. I was asking for a refill, so his I... His feed's gone too. Really? So does that mean he's okay? I mean, Carol didn't wreck his diet or anything. You can tell Carol that Windsong's fine. He's eating, drinking, and no, she didn't wreck him. <sighs> Great. Thanks. <laughs> what are you two doing? Didn't you read the memo? Memo? No one touches anything without asking me first. We were just taking our saddles out. Why? To tack up our horses. Max and Drew may have forced you to work, but we D'Angelo's don't believe that paying students should have to do manual labour. But I want to tack up my own horse. How are we supposed to learn otherwise? You're here to learn how to ride, not to become stable hands. Because no one would want to become a stable hand, would they? <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I meant. <laughs> but anyway, from now on, students ride and stable hands work. Got it? So basically, you're throwing the Regnery's whole philosophy out the window. What philosophy? I'm sure Drew will be very happy to share it with you. More like it. Looks pretty good, doesn't he? Good. He's like a different horse. His red told me you were worried. What's wrong? I don't know. It's just how can a horse change so much so suddenly? Well, he's just got his appetite back. Horses react to change like people. I know. I thought that at first, when he wasn't eating, now he's pigging out. And then he wasn't drinking. Now he's practically like a camel. Don't you worry about Winsong. My guess is that he's finally settled in. Decided that Pine Hollow isn't such a bad place after all. I guess you're right. Like I'm an expert on racehorses anyway. <laughs> Veronica. A number of people have come to me with complaints about the way you've been treating them. Who? That's not important. The point is that you can't tell Red... What did he tell you? ...or any of the staff what to do. You're not their boss. Well, I'm the executive student president. Yes. And that doesn't give you the right to change long-term arrangements between the stables and the pupils. But we can't afford that arrangement with Stevie. I'll be the judge of that. <sighs> well, I was just trying to cut costs. If you want to spend your dad's money on intercoms, I can't stop you. OK, but these are still my stables, and you won't bully my staff and my students. These are the horse assignments for Friday's lesson. Any changes are made by me. You pull another stunt like that last one, and you can find yourself another instructor. Are we clear? my responsibilities very seriously. But it seems I'm the only one. Drew speaks to me as if I'm like, like everybody else around the place. Are you listening? Yeah, I agree with you. They should have more respect. What did your dad say? Well, this you really won't believe. First, he tells me he's not prepared to defend my position with Drew. <sighs> then, then he tells me I'm spending too much money. Unbelievable. All he cares about is this stupid horse race. It's like his whole future depends on it. I imagine. 
I gotta go. You want a ride? Nah, my mum's picking me up. See you later. Bye. Heavy it is, the head that wears the crown. Like you'd know. <laughs> what? What is it that you really want, Veronica? You see, knowing as I do, the real you, I often get confused when I see you behaving like a horse's... Excuse me? I saved Pine Hollow. If my father hadn't have piled all that money into the place, there'd be a for sale sign over the entrance right now. That was a fine thing you did for them. A generous gift. A very generous gift. But a real gift doesn't demand any payment now, does it? Hmm? I've, uh... I've thought of what it is I want, Scooter. Oh? I'll have another strawberry shake, thanks. And uh, don't hold back on the malt. Don't ever change, Veronica. <laughs> easy, Winston, easy. This should take the swelling down in your leg. <clears throat> Ethan? Carol. Uh... I just wanted to say sorry. I should have been more careful with Starlight's food. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry I freaked out on you. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. I know. A horse like Winsong only comes along once in a trainer's career. And only if he's really lucky. You really love him, don't you? Yeah, we understand each other. Why'd you sell him to Mr. D'Angelo? That's the business. <laughs> Can't keep them all. Veronica's dad isn't exactly a horse lover, is he? <laughs> he's a businessman. He's just doing his job. He looks restless. Yeah. Rare in the guy. Are those hives? Uh, yeah, just, just nerves. They look sore and itchy. Carol, relax. He's fine. about him, but he really gets under my skin. Maybe you like him. He's arrogant. Totally full of himself. And, and he's cute. Irish. That silly one-sided grin and the way his eyes all crinkle up. And so unfinished. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I'm taking a bridle and a saddle? Not without signing them out first. I don't have time for all that paperwork nonsense, Veronica. Get real. It's the only way to be sure people aren't stealing the gear. Come on. But you know everyone here. Really? Yes. You're just doing all this to be a horse's butt. You just don't understand how to run a stable. That's why you're a stable hand, and you always will be a stable hand. <gasps> Veronica! How could you say that about Red? Oh. What? Red, wait. She didn't mean it. Yes, she did. I'll make her say sorry. Don't worry about it, Christy. Pine Hollow has changed. I'm reconsidering my future here. You're not a racehorse starlight. So much pressure. Everybody depending on you to win. But you'd never give up your crunchies, would you? <laughs> I thought we were alone. Ethan?
What's wrong? Famous racehorse trainer ever. What's he doing here? Training my new horse. His name's Winsong. He's nowhere near his record time. We're not doing time trials, Mr. D'Angelo. He's just stretching his legs, getting used to his new surroundings. I'm not interested in excuses. I need results. Drew assigns the school horses, not Veronica. You are so wrong. So when it comes to the students, you talk to my daughter, Veronica. Right. You look so tired. Where was the fire, the energy? I was just about to try another herbal remedy and give him a leg massage. Just do what it takes to make him win, OK? How can a horse change so much so suddenly? That's more like it. Are those hives? They look sore and itchy. Carol, relax. He's fine. Pine Hollow has changed. I'm reconsidering my future here. Winsong. You probably just startled him. You don't understand. So explain to me why you're in Winsong's store when you know you're supposed to leave him alone. What's going on? I heard a noise and I heard someone leave the stall. It was probably just Mr. D'Angelo. I saw him leaving Pine Hollow a few minutes ago. What's he doing here so late at night? I could ask you the same question. And so could Drew and Ethan. You're not going to tell Ethan I was in his stall, are you? I don't know. Come on, Red, please. I don't want him getting mad at me again. All right. I won't say anything this time. Thanks. You're the best. Come on. I'll give you a lift home. You didn't see him. It was like he was a totally different horse. What do you mean? It's hard to explain. It was like he was spooked, except way worse. I was sure he was going to trample me. And when I touched him, his heart was beating so fast. It was faster than, well, than wind song. That's awful. What if he's sick or something? Uh, newsflash, Lisa. He's a racehorse. Being temperamental is what they do. I don't know, Stevie. I've worked with racehorses, and I know what they're like. This was different. You have to admit, it is kind of weird that Mr. D'Angelo was hanging around Winsong's stall. What do you think he was doing? I don't know. But I do know something strange is going on, and I'm going to find out what it is. Hi, Red. I was going to grab a drink from the lounge. Do you want me to get you one? No, thanks. This place is a mess. Mm, does look messier than normal. That's because things aren't normal. Yeah, everything's up in the air. And the fact that now Mr D'Angelo is here, everything's about money instead of horses. And Max being overseas... Things will pick up soon. You'll see. I don't know whether I'm prepared to wait. What do you mean? I've been offered a job at another stables. But, Red, you can't leave. You belong here. I used to think that. But now I doubt if anyone would even notice I was gone. I'd miss you heaps. 
Thanks, Christy. But Veronica would be glad if I left, and I might just do that. Veronica, I want you to leave Red alone. But what did he tell you I've done? He didn't say anything. I've seen the way you treat him. Christy, you're upset. Not as upset as I will be if you make Red go to another stables. Well, well, that's up to him. If Red leaves, Veronica, I will never speak to you again. Veronica, wait up. What is it? It's for you. Marked urgent. It's a bill for the intercom system I had installed. I've already paid this. Are you sure? Uh, I'm not an idiot. Oh, look, the check's right here. There's your problem. Your check bounced. What? That, that's impossible! Somebody must have screwed up. That's too bad. But if I don't get this fixed, they're going to take my intercom system away. What should I do? How should I know? You're the executive. I never thought I'd say this, but can we stop reading about horses now, please? Might as well. I haven't found anything that would explain Winsong's behavior. The problem is, his symptoms are so vague, anything could be wrong. Maybe the problem is there's no problem. Then how would you explain his change in appetite? the hives and the aggressiveness. Maybe he was aggressive because the hives were bothering him. Remember when I had the measles? I was so grumpy, I almost bit my brother's head off. Your brother? I brought over some soup and I barely made it out alive. My point is, if there was really something wrong with Winsong, either Ethan or Mr. D'Angelo would have done something about it by now. I guess. I'm sorry, did you mean, thanks, Stevie? You're right as always? I know what you're saying makes sense, but there's something not right. I can feel it. But you can't prove it. You haven't even seen Winsong since last night. Maybe he's calmed down. You're right. Ah, uh, I love hearing those words. Where are you going? To Winsong's stall. But you just said maybe he's calmed down. Yeah, that's right. Maybe. So I'm gonna go check on him and take a look for myself. We need to talk. Oh, no kidding. I don't know what you're paying your accountant, but whatever it is, it's too much. You have to fire him. What are you talking about? Well, what sort of a loser could screw up so much that one of our checks could bounce? Bounced? Like a little rubber ball. I'm so embarrassed, Daddy. You have to call the intercom people and explain. No, I'm not going to call anyone. Oh, Daddy. You don't expect me to do it. I mean, I'm just the executive student president. It's not really my job. Veronica, sweetie. Here. You can use this phone. Veronica, you must listen to me. <laughs> Hello. Whatever it is, can't it wait? I mean, I, I, I've ordered some riding outfits and I have to go and pick them up. And... No, it can't wait. It's very important. It concerns you, and me, and Winsong. Well, what's going on? That check didn't bounce because of any accountant. It bounced because things are tight now. How? I made a few bad investments. Oh, well, well, that's too bad. Uh, but, it, but it happens all the time, right? I, I mean... I mean, you're always telling me how investing's a gamble and you have to take the losses with the gains. Yes, that's true. However, unfortunately, the stock market is down. And I overextended myself when I invested in Pine Hollow and that racehorse. So, so cash some of our stocks or something. We have lots of money, Daddy. Don't we? No. That's what I've been trying to tell you. We've lost almost everything. 
This, this can't be happening to me. Um, there's got to be something you can do. Well, there's one last hope. If Winston can win the Bridgemont Cup, then we could sell him for a tidy profit. Then uh, we'll be all right until the stock market rises again. You're going to sell him? I'm sorry, darling, we don't have a choice. <sighs> and what if he loses? Well, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that that doesn't happen. been acting up. I thought Ethan said he was going to do something about this. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'll find out. I promise. You guys, you'll never guess. Mr. D'Angelo is going broke. No way. Even Veronica couldn't spend all their money. It's true. He said that Winsong's their last hope. They need him to win the cup so they can sell him for way more money. I figures that D'Angelo would see a beautiful horse like Winsong as an investment. What are they going to do with him if he loses? Maybe he's doing something to win Song to make sure he doesn't lose. Red's thinking of taking another job because he doesn't feel appreciated around here. But we love him. That's why I'm putting together this videotape. To show him how much he'd be missed if he left Pine Hollow. That's a great idea. OK, so what would you miss most if he left Pine Hollow? If Red left, I'd miss the way he helps me take up my horse. Good. What else? Are you OK, Veronica? You, you upset about something, or...? Huh? Has something bad happened? Oh. It's much worse than bad. It's... It's the end. Can I ask what it is? Oh, you'll find out anyway. The D'Angelo's are near enough to work. Oh, it's only money. It's a lot of money. What I mean is, nobody's hurt or killed, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> only somebody who's never had money would say that. Oh, money's good, don't get me wrong, but it's who you are that matters, not what you've got. But that's exactly what makes me who I am. Without money, I'd be like everybody else. I'd be ordinary, like the Saddle Club. <sighs> I'd still like it, rich or poor. You might, Scooter, but the people who matter wouldn't. And who are these people that matter, exactly? The people with money. Oh, and they'll turn their backs on you because you haven't got it. Well, they'd have to, because then I wouldn't be one of them. Hmm. See, you're not talking about people that matter. You're talking about morons. It's not what you've got in your pocket that matters. It's what you've got in here. And I'll tell you another thing. That drink is on the house. Sure. If your friends found out you had no money, they might run you over on the street. Don't you see? It all makes sense. The change in appetite, dehydration, aggression, not to mention the fact that Winsong suddenly got so strong and fast. I know Mr. D'Angelo isn't big on horses, but he wouldn't try and hurt Winsong. But he is desperate. If he doesn't make a lot of money fast, he'll lose everything. Winsong's his only hope. So, to make sure he wins, he's given Winsong something to make him perform better. Oh, Winsong. But we won't know for sure until we get him checked out by Dr. Judy. We can't call her. She won't even look at Winsong without Mr. D'Angelo's permission. If he's doing something wrong, then there's no way he'll let a vet anywhere near Winsong. <sighs> Where are you going? I can't just let him suffer like this. If we can't call Dr. Judy, I'm at least going to go talk to Ethan. 
Okay, we've got to catch Mr. D'Angelo in the act. But how? Scoot is good at camera stuff, isn't he? Why? <laughs> talk to you what's up I don't know for sure but I think mr. D'Angelo has been doing something to win song that's a serious accusation I know but it explains win song's strange behavior what strange behavior you know the mood the energy the appetite swings it all points to I don't need a lesson on how to take care of a horse Carol win songs perfectly healthy his appetite's back and he's faster and stronger than ever. What about the hives? The hives are just stress related. Sometimes they happen before a big race. It wouldn't hurt to call a vet, just in case. I appreciate your concern, but Mr. D'Angelo couldn't be giving him anything. If he had, I'd know. Wind song's fine. Trust me. Great, but it'll look even better without you in the picture. Do you think it'll work? It has to. We're running out of time. And so is Wind Song. Well, we're all set. Now all we have to do is wait. Miss Carol, she should be here by now. I hope she brings us some food. I'm star. Hey, what's wrong with Wind Song? He looks like he's having trouble breathing. Dr. Judy! I know you said we should wait for Veronica's dad's permission, but Wind Song can't breathe. You've got to help him. What's wrong with him? He's going into anaphylactic shock. What will happen to him? I have to open his airway. Why don't you girls wait outside? We can't leave him! Now! Think he'll be okay? He has to be. What's going on here? When someone's having trouble breathing. Dr. Judy said he was going into Anna... Anna... Anaphylactic shock? What? Is he all right? He'll be fine, but he's had a severe allergic reaction to something. What did you give him? The only thing this horse has ingested is whatever homeopathic nonsense Ethan's been giving him. I've been monitoring him closely. There were no signs of trouble before now. Oh, really? And how long has he been covered in hives? A day. Two at the most. Three. And he's been getting worse. You do know that horses can have severe allergic reactions to herbal remedies. Yes, but I just thought... You that... should have called a vet as soon as you noticed the hives. You've seriously damaged this horse. I was doing my best. I didn't think the allergy was that serious. Wait, you knew he was having allergic reactions and you kept giving him herbal remedies? Well, I had no choice. You pressured me to produce a winner. I told you there wasn't time, but you wouldn't listen. So I gave Winsong something to perk him up and make him eat. Is that so bad? Well, it is when your cure makes the horse sick. I must say, I'm very surprised. I knew your father. I expected more from you. I can't believe you're leaving. I'm really going to miss you. We all will. <coughs> Winsong is still my horse, you know. No, he's not, sweetie. We can't afford to keep him. I hope he's going to a good home. He is. Well, at least we have money now, right? 
And maybe a new riding outfit will help cheer me up. What was that, like, three seconds of grief? <laughs> There'll be no new outfits for quite a while. But you said we'd be OK once we sold Winsong. If we sold him for a profit. But since he was in no shape to race, I barely broke even. In fact, I've spoken to Drew. I'm afraid I can't put any more money into Pine Hollow. You mean I'm no longer executive student president? I'm sorry, honey. Yes! Oh. Daddy! Well, Winsong's on his way to his new home. Yeah, I know the people. They're nice. Are you okay, Ethan? Actually, uh, I gotta thank you, Carol. I was so focused on trying to be as good as my dad that I forgot the most important thing he taught me. The welfare of the horse is your first priority. You reminded me of that again, so thanks. <laughs> I hope this is important, because I really don't have time. It'll only take a minute. Please, Red. If Red left, I'd miss the way he helps me take up my horse. Well, he gives Dime crunchies, and when he's around, Veronica is nice to us. Well, make that less mean than usual. We love you, Red. You're a lucky fella. You have a job you love? with people who love you. I know it's not always blue skies, and you've got a little cloud in yours at the moment, but I think this cloud, according to Veronica, has a silver lining. Uh, but then maybe you can't see that right at this moment. That's okay, because Thanks, I... Scooter. That's enough. <laughs> but the fact is, deep down, I don't think she really... Scooter. Right. Read me, mate? You're the best. Goodness, what would I most miss about Red if he went away? I just couldn't imagine Pine Hollow without him, and, and I wouldn't want to either. No, that is that is definitely far too upsetting. Is there anything else you want me to say, dear? Oh, no, that would be... Christy says you don't think that anyone would notice if you left Pine Hollow. But we would notice. You're like an honorary member of the Saddle Club. We're not the only ones who would miss you. You tell them, guys. <laughs> it's unanimous. See? You can't leave Pine Hollow because I'd... We don't miss you. You did all that for me? <laughs> so, will you stay? Well, I don't know. Of course I'll stay. How could I leave? Pine Hollow is my home. Country challenge on Saturday will be between these two. Belle and I might surprise you, Drew. And Lisa's like lightning lately. Come on, Garnet, prove it! Come on, Starlet, we can beat them. Come on, Garnet, go! Carol, my nose! Good Lord. girl, Starlet! Lord! Always gracious, that girl. Good girl, Starlet. The cross country challenge is ridden in pairs. How are you three gonna handle that? Don't worry about us. We've got everything under control. Yeah, we've got everything under control. Haven't we?
Dad's donating the cup that he and his brother won 20 years ago to Pine Hollow. Well, two things. First, he's pretty sure that his daughter, that's me, is going to be part of the winning team. But of course... Yeah, we are so going to beat those Saddle Club losers. <laughs> and the second thing? Well, Dad's changed a lot since he lost all that money and bad investments. Changed? Yeah, he's become a lot more thoughtful. Started talking more about how important families are. Here. I am so psyched about the race. So how are we going to choose a team? Let's make it totally fair and draw straws. The shortest straw is the odd girl out. Sounds good to me. OK? OK, someone pick. Come on, guys, someone's got to go first. All right, I'll go. Yes! Okay, Lisa, your turn. I can't look. <sighs> I'm sorry, Carol. It's okay. Somebody had to pick the short straw. Don't worry, we'll find you another partner. It'll all work out. Melanie, Tracy here is new to writing, but looking forward to it. <laughs> He's gonna love it here. Nice to meet you, Melanie. Uh, could you give Tracy a tour of the place? Yeah, it'd be fun. I'll start with the best part. I'll introduce you to the horses and the ponies. We should really get our names engraved on it now. The race is just a formality. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've got great news. Mum just rang. She's taking me to the Laplace fashion show. Laplace? Well, isn't he a bit last year? Only people who can't afford it say that. Well, well, when is it? Maybe I can drag myself along. Saturday night. Well, are you supposed to get up to the city in time after the race? Uh, well, I won't be entering the race now. What? Well, looking good is better than winning some race. <laughs> so, where does that leave me? Without any new clothes for next summer, I'd say. And this is the tack room. As you can see, we have a wide variety of tack. I can go over it if you like. I know this like the back of my hand. Bridles, bits, and the saddles are just over here. Now, every horse has its own saddle, and they're marked so we hey, don't forget them. I really like your jacket. Where'd you get it? A very wealthy friend of mine gave it to me, just before she went bust. Cool. Let's get out of here. There's much more of Pine Hollow to see. <laughs> Bad news. What? Looks like I won't be racing in the cross country challenge. All the other eligible riders are already paired up. No way. That stinks. Yeah. Carol, you ride with Stevie. This race means more to you than it does to me. Besides, I'll only hold Stevie back. Lisa, no, that's not true. You ride with Carol. I'll drop it. No way, I offered first. But I've got a test coming up that I should study for anyway. Both of you, stop it. No one's dropping out of the race. It won't help anything. Are you sure? OK, but I wish I didn't feel so crummy about this. You guys go ahead and plan your race. I'll be cheering for you. Why don't we work together at planning the race? That's a great idea. Carol could be like a coach. What do you think? I think you guys are the best. Look at what yesterday. <laughs> ah, Veronica. Drew has some wonderful news for you. Oh, what's that? You're going to ride in the race after all. One of the best students at Pine Hollow doesn't have a partner either. Isn't that music to your ears? Well, who's the student? Look, I think you guys have got a pretty good chance of winning this race. All you need to do is work together. Yes, but who's the student? Carol. Carol? It's a winning combination. Ah, uh, Drew, can I talk to my father for a second, please? Mm. 
Well, you don't seem too pleased with the news. I thought it was important for you to win this race. Yes, Daddy, it is, but it really is too last minute for a new partner. Now, I'd rather not enter the race than have not enough time to prepare. Veronica, don't give up so easily. Daddy, the truth is, Carol and I, we don't really like each other. Try to look past it. Let's keep this trophy in the family, hmm? For the family, Veronica. I can ride with no hands, too. Want to see? ride that horse. It's just a pony. She's still good. Hey, do you like shopping? Are you kidding? I love shopping. Good. My mum's coming to pick me up soon and you can come to the mall with us if you like. I'll call my mum and ask. <laughs> hi. I was wondering if, um, hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Do you think we could have a talk? Not now, Veronica. I'm not interested in being harassed. Actually, it's about the race. I'm not entered, so you don't have to worry about trying to psych me out. I was wondering if you would be interested in entering with me. Huh? Christy dropped out. I need to find a partner or I don't race. I am not interested. Carol, let's face it. We are each other's only hope. Drew thinks we have a good chance of winning it together. You're a very good rider, Carol. The only person I would even consider riding with here after Christy. And I don't enter a contest to lose. What's the catch? Hey, Melanie. Want to go on a hack together? You should ask the new girl to come too. Sorry, I can't. I've already got plans for this afternoon. Maybe some other time. Bye. So, can you come? Change your plans. Mum's taking me and some of my friends to the Sweetwater Fun Park. Oh, what about the mall? Park's way better. So, do you want me to come? I do, but there's not enough room in the car. Oh, sorry. Hey, everyone. Great, you're here. Let's fold and deal Carol in. I was talking to Veronica, and she asked me to enter the race with her. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I was interested in entering the race. But not with her. Actually, I accepted. I'm entering as Veronica's partner. <sighs> you are late. Didn't anyone ever teach you any manners? Look, Veronica, I don't like this whole thing any better than you do, but if we're gonna ride in this race together, we better learn to get along. <laughs> I agree. You can start by not insulting me. <sighs> okay, let's talk strategy. <laughs> What's that? A map of the course I drew. <laughs> really? It's pretty babyish. You call that being nice? Where'd you get that? My father had it drawn up for me. And it's even got marked out the route that he and his brother took to win in record time. This gives us a definite advantage. But is it fair? Oh, please, Carol. You're not with the Saddle Club anymore, so you can grow up. I'd really be more comfortable taking the ridge route. Why? It's twice as long. With fewer hazards, and it doesn't mean negotiating the march. Yuck! There's got to be another way. <coughs> hey, Carol. How are things working out with you and Veronica? Bet it's about as much fun as getting your ears pierced. <gasps> it has its benefits. I'd like to hear them. She has this awesome map. It's like having a bird's eye view of the whole course. Figures. 
Why are you telling us this? I was gonna help you plot your course. Carol, we can't discuss strategy with you. Why not? We're riding against each other now. <laughs> Ashley, how about the two of us go on a hack? What happened to your other plans? Well, they fell through. I've got the tack ready. Sorry, now I've got other plans. And you know, we go to all the trouble of tacking up and Tracy would just waltz in and you dump me. Thank you. Stevie and Lisa are gonna take the forest route. Oh, way to go, Carol. Spy on the opposition. I didn't spy. Well, Snoop, then. Do you have to practice being so awful, or does it just come naturally to you? I call things as they are. It's not my fault you can't take the truth. Well, maybe if you were nicer to people, you might make some real friends for a change. Excuse me, I have plenty of friends. Who? Well, Christy, for one. Uh, Christy left you here without a partner. A real friend wouldn't do that. Well, well that's not my fault. I try to respect people. That way I get the same kind of treatment back. Well, how nice for you, Carol. But unlike you, I don't need everybody else to like me. <sighs> All right. And we don't have to like each other to win this. But with your expert knowledge on the course and my riding skills, we can't lose. But my riding skills are better than yours. You're not even in my class. You are so impossible! Do it. I can't work with someone so bossy and arrogant. I should have listened to you guys. What was I thinking when I agreed to be your partner? You had your eye on the prize. That's what you were thinking. Nice try, though. Huh? This I quit stuff sounds like an excuse not to race. Yeah. What's really going on is you're afraid you and Veronica might lose to Lisa and me. Has everybody gone crazy around here? This has nothing to do with you two. I just can't bear to work with Veronica. If that's what you want us to believe. You both know I could beat the two of you in my sleep. <gasps> that sounds like someone who will be riding against us. I think. <sighs> Last card. ride with you in the race, but I do it my way. Well, you can ride however you want to, because I don't want you in my way either. Likewise. I'll be waiting for you at the finish line. In your dreams. I'm sure it's not the end of the world, Melanie. Yes, it is. I don't have any friends. Oh, I thought you and Ashley were quite tight. Ashley's mad at me. Did you do something to make her mad? Um, yeah. I wasn't very nice to her. Mm. Tell her you're sorry. That usually does the trick. If she'll talk to me. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Everyone, remember, this is an event of skill and strategy. Now, it doesn't matter which route you take, the team with the fastest aggregate time wins. And a word of advice, don't push your horses too much. Pace them, or you'll end up walking home. All right, see you guys at the finish line.
take the short route. They're riding like maniacs. Let's go. Slow. Okay, I'll give you a rest. Veronica and Carol did us a favor taking off like that. Anybody who matched that pace have blown their horses. Looks like slow and steady wins the race. That strategy is working. Way to go, partner. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't last. <laughs> Come on, Garnet. Come on, Garnet. Let's catch him. Ashley, I'm sorry I didn't go on the hack when you asked me to and wasted my time with Tracy. You wanted your new friend to yourself. I was jealous. I thought Tracy liked you better than me. Even if she did, you and I could still be friends. It wouldn't change anything between us. I know that now. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Pretty please? Pretty please. With cherries on top? With cherries and crushed nuts on top. <laughs> okay. We just have to get across the marsh. And the finish line's just around the corner. It's too boggy in the middle. I'm gonna have to go around. Finish this off. Veronica better be right behind us. Come on, Garnet. What are you waiting for? Go! You're gonna have to go around, Veronica. Daddy went through it. So am I. Yeah, but that was in the summer. The marsh wasn't go. as boggy then. Come on, don't you dare quit on me now. <laughs> You two look like you're getting on fine. <laughs> We're, We're best, best friends. <laughs> They're heading for the finish. Let's go see who won the race. I better go face the music. Here. Yeah. Looks like everyone has somebody. Except me. Come on, let's get you two cooled out. You guys ran a good race. Veronica, is everything all right? Sorry, Daddy. Did you give it your best shot? Yeah, I did, but... Then you've nothing to apologize for. But, but I should have won it for you. You will. Next year. <gasps> Len. I know. Mm. Wow. Where's Carol? She should be here. Everybody, can I please have your attention? Can we give Mr. D'Angelo a hearty welcome, please? Thank you. 
It is with pleasure that I congratulate the first winners of the D'Angelo Cup in the Pine Hollow Cross Country Challenge. Lisa Atwood and Stevie Lake. Yes. Well done. Congratulations, girls. Well done. I wish Carol was here. There she is. Congratulations. You guys ran a great race. Well, you gave us a real scare. We could have won. But then Veronica went and did a Veronica thing. She just can't help herself. <laughs> Still, it wasn't all that bad. I got to see Veronica fall in the mud. <clears throat> um, Carol, I'm sorry. I know we could have won if I hadn't have been so stupid. That's OK, Veronica. Wait. How about some punch? To celebrate a great day. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 